U.S. Energy uh, Secretary Ernest Monitz is uh, currently visiting Japan, and he's agreed to help deal with the problems at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Monitz toured the plant on Friday, accompanied by Tokyo Electric Power Company President Naomi Hirose. He inspected equipment there, including wells used to monitor the spread of underground contamination and pumps for removing radioactive water close to the ocean. Monitz reportedly said U.S. Energy Department researchers are currently working on technologies to contain contaminated water, and they might be of help. Monitz and Hirose agreed to beef up technical cooperation in five fields. We have many obstacles to overcome at Fukushima Daiichi, such as the decommissioning and removal of used fuel rods. We're encouraged to be able to work together. TEPCO is still working on ways to identify exactly where radioactive water is leaking from and to keep track of the movement of contaminated groundwater. The crews are about to begin another operation that carries with it some risks. Nuclear regulators have approved a plan for them to remove spent fuel rods from one of the reactor buildings. More than 1,300 spent rods are being stored in a pool inside the building, along with about 200 that have not been used. Engineers want to start removing them in about a week. Explosions rocked the building during the accident two years ago, so the engineers need to check if any debris damaged the rods. Then they'll use a crane to remove them one by one. They want to make sure they don't get caught up in the wreckage. Managers say they hope to finish the work by the end of 2014. Engineers at Japan's damaged nuclear plant spend hours every day trying to get a complex network of pipes, cylinders and filters to work. The Advanced Liquid Processing System, or ALPS, is designed to remove most radioactive substances from contaminated water at Fukushima Daiichi. The government is spending about $150 million to upgrade the system. Our latest installment of Nuclear Watch examines how ALPS would be used to tackle one of the biggest problems at the facility. Officials with plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company say about 400 tons of groundwater seeps into the reactor buildings every day and gets contaminated. TEPCO workers have built nearly 1,000 tanks to store the tainted water, but they filled 90% of them. About 440,000 tons of wastewater is being stored in the tanks and in the basements of some buildings. Another 15,000 tons has accumulated in underground tunnels. Last March, TEPCO engineers started running ALPS on a trial basis. It can remove 62 radioactive substances from water, but it can filter out tritium. The system has three operational lines. It can treat 500 tons of water a day at full capacity. But ALPS has been dogged by a series of malfunctions that forced engineers to shut it down. In June, some pre-treated radioactive water leaked from the system's stainless steel tanks. Salt and chemicals had eroded the containers, leaving small holes. 
And in September, engineers halted a test run because of human error. A worker had left a rubber mat inside a tank following an inspection, and the mat clogged the drain. TEPCO managers and government leaders are pinning their hopes on Alps. NHK World's Taku Kunieda outlines the challenges they face. Some of the problems with Alps result from malfunctions. Others happen because of human error. About 3,000 people work at the plant every day. Two thirds are subcontractors. They don't have good enough communication with TEPCO staff. This poor communication results in mistakes. Managers need to fix it urgently. Right now, workers are testing the system, and they say they hope to put it into full operation next year. They originally planned to start full operation last month, so they are already behind the schedules. The government is helping TEPCO install a more sophisticated system to run in parallel. Once that complete, the systems together will be able to treat 1,500 tons of water every day. Tritium is similar to hydrogen in terms of its physical properties. It moves easily with water. So if we get tritium inside our bodies, we generally experiment with fluids. But there's no technology for taking tritium out of water. Still, the government allows higher releases of tritium than strontium, which also emits beta rays. Some experts say water containing tritium can be released without harming the environment as long as the substance is diluted. Water treated by Alps will still be stored in tanks for the time being. No one has come up with a permanent solution. Radioactive substances removed by Alps will also be stored on site. Managers have not decided where they will dispose of those substances either. Once Alps is in full operation, the next big challenge will be dealing with the tritium it cannot remove. And managers will need to choose the final disposal sites for the treated water. The people in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant may soon find themselves working under different conditions. Officials at Japan's industry ministry have taken steps to turn Tokyo Electric Power Company into a holding company. They want to separate their operations and create units to deal with specific areas of work. Ministry officials want TEPCO executives to review how their company is organized. Then they hope to split it up. They want to create one company for the decommissioning operation and others for nuclear power generation, thermal power generation and transmission. The ministry officials believe that would make it easier to manage the work at the nuclear plant and deal with the reactors. TEPCO executives say forming a holding company would allow them to better manage each unit and make it easier for them to cut costs. Managers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have tried again and again to contain the spread of contaminated water, but they've been unable to stop the flow. They've come up with a new approach they hope will bring them success. They're going to pump up underground water around a storage tank. More than 300 tons of contaminated water leaked out of the tank in August. Workers dug wells so they could monitor the scale of the leak. On Monday, they checked a well 10 meters from the tank. They detected 220,000 becquerels per liter of radioactive substances in the water. Now they're going to dig five more wells, and they plan to start pumping up underground water over the next few weeks. They hope to collect and store about 10 tons per day. The workers are also busy removing highly radioactive soil from around the tank. They plan to start digging over a wider area. Soma port lies just 30 kilometers north of the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant. Fishing resumed here last month following the lifting of a ban imposed after it was revealed in July that radioactive water had leaked into the ocean.
As the fishermen prepared to cast their nets, once again, the head of the local fishing cooperative offered his encouragement. Due to the problem of the contaminated water, I know you all have various concerns. By embarking on this trial fishing, we must show that the fisheries cooperative in Soma Futaba is willing to continue fishing. The fishermen are permitted to land 16 types of seafood. Around 95% of the catch is discarded. Many fishermen are concerned about the future of their livelihood. We are worried whether or not we can actually sell the fish. Opening a new session of parliament this month, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe insisted the radiation leaks do not pose a threat to human health. The local fishermen are suffering from a bad reputation founded on falsehood. The effects on food and water are way below the limits for radiation levels. Just offshore from the Fukushima plant, scientists from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in the United States are working alongside Japanese counterparts monitoring radiation levels. Among them is Ken Buesela, who spoke to VOA via Skype. That radiation will be across the Pacific, but it gets much, much lower, even short distances offshore. Buesela says a bigger concern is the accumulation of isotopes in marine life. Earlier this year, cesium isotopes from Fukushima were found in tuna caught off California. The tuna were caught off San Diego with the Fukushima cesium isotopes. They were 10 to 20 times lower than they had been off Japan. Now, the new releases, the leaks from the tanks, they're changing in character. Strontium-90 has become of more concern because it's a bone-seeking isotope. That will stay in fish much longer. Tetco, the owner of the Fukushima plant, is building an underground frozen wall to prevent contaminated water from leaking into the sea. It is also experimenting with a system to decontaminate the water. A nuclear expert at the environmental organization Greenpeace, Rihanna Toole, says it's not clear those technologies will work. They already spend a lot of money trying to, to implement them. What uh, Greenpeace wants is that the government really gets in international advice and get as much support as possible to try and find the right solution for this problem. The livelihood of the fishermen of Fukushima depend on finding that solution. Henry Richwell for VOA News, Tokyo. The Japanese government has indicated its willingness to consider providing funds for cleaning up the aftermath of the Fukushima nuclear disaster. This came in response to a call by the ruling Liberal Democratic Party for a greater government role in the efforts. LDP officials have made the proposal as Tokyo Electric Power Company struggles to contain tainted water leaks at its crippled plant. Scrapping the damaged reactors is also a tough challenge, requiring huge costs and time. At present, the utility is required to pay the decontamination costs the government has covered, but the ruling party proposed that the state should consider financing additional decontamination efforts as a public works project. Finance Minister Taro Aso said the cabinet will discuss the proposal. I respect the proposal by the LDP panel, and the government will carefully study it. Also said the government will also study the possible use of public funds for construction and management of storage facilities for the contaminated soil. All right, well, disaster prevention specialists say a major earthquake that's expected to hit central and western Japan could be more devastating than predicted. A powerful quake in the Nankai Trough out in the Pacific Ocean would unleash towering tsunami. The specialists say more than 130,000 people could die in the western prefecture of Osaka alone. That's much higher than previous estimates, NHK World's Masaki Otake reports. 
Officials with the central government estimated that 323,000 people may be killed across a wide area of Japan if a major earthquake occurs in the Nankai Trough. They said 9,800 of the victims will be in Osaka Prefecture. But a panel of experts in the prefecture raised that forecast to more than 133,000. They assumed tsunami would inundate a much larger area. The map on the left shows the central government's flood projection. The panel's projection is on the right. The experts believe the flooded area could be three times larger. They say a powerful quake would trigger liquefaction at river embankments and cause more flooding. The new projections are raising new concern among people living in Osaka. The figure gives me the creeps. It's just unthinkable. But the experts say a quick evacuation could be key to reducing casualties. The tsunami are projected to take 54 minutes to reach coastal areas of Osaka Prefecture. It would take them an hour and 50 minutes to reach the city of Osaka. The experts say if people start evacuating immediately after an earthquake, the number of deaths would be greatly reduced from more than 133,000 to fewer than 9,000. Kansai University professor Yoshiaki Kawata heads the panel. Most of the affected people would survive if they had relevant information and knowledge. The Osaka government plans to review its disaster preparations by the end of next March. It must first estimate damage to power, water and other infrastructure, as well as the prefecture's economy. Masaki Otake, NHK World. Japan and Ukraine share at least one unfortunate legacy. They have experienced catastrophic nuclear accidents. The good news is that they're cooperating to tackle the aftermath of the accidents. NHK World's Noriko Okada tells the story. This is the number four reactor of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. In 1986, the reactor was blown apart triggering a radioactive disaster that still continues. 27 years have passed, but radiation levels are still high around the plant. The Ukrainian government is constructing a new dome-like structure to cover the aging reactor. Many people remain unable to return home. In August, Japan's foreign minister, Fumio Kishida, visited the site. Japan wants to build cooperation with Ukraine as it fights to recover from its own 2011 Fukushima nuclear crisis. Japan is learning much from what Ukrainians experienced after the accident. As the two countries strengthen diplomatic ties, their citizens are also moving closer. The Chernobyl National Museum in Ukraine's capital, Kiev, is dedicated to the nuclear disaster. A special exhibition about the Fukushima disaster is also on display. We are always open to people who think about and pray for Fukushima. I hope this is going to be a place to share those feelings. The exhibition was coordinated by Japanese and Ukrainians. More than 130 items are on display, including newspaper articles and pictures taken by locals in each devastated area. One picture shows Japanese children wearing masks at the opening ceremony of the school year. A radiation map shows the extent of the contamination around the nuclear plant. Many people visited the exhibition to learn about Fukushima. 
I feel this picture represents the reality of Fukushima now. I believe it's very important for us Ukrainians to see them and know the truth. Ukrainians still wrestle with the aftermath of their own disaster. This national hospital is treating about 120 children aged 2 to 18. They come from the contaminated areas and their family members have worked at the Chernobyl plant. Some suffer congenital defects, others have leukemia. Uh, I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. This doctor says that they cannot afford to buy new medical equipment. Some devices are more than 25 years old. <laughs> and an important gift was delivered from Japan last month. A brand new blood analyzer. It is used to detect signs of leukemia. A Japanese NGO organized the donation of this equipment from Japan. The hospital doctors are delighted with the gift. The device is portable, so we can take it to contaminated areas and give the children their high-quality testing. We appreciate the gift so much. Japan and Ukraine are still facing challenges in their struggle to recover. But those challenges are also bringing people together in a shared hope for a better future. No we need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.